Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we've got a very simple pick a card reading. It's just all about money. So you can pick between group one, group two, or group three and see what you, you know, see what guidance comes through, see what cards come through. We are following on from yesterday's Earth Element video. And thank you to everyone who commented on that. The comments were so lovely. And I'm glad that, you know, I think, yeah, we do need a bit of a distraction from all the craziness that's out there. By the way, the ice cream truck is out and about. So <laughs> I know that that was very significant in one of the readings last time. So let's see if uh, that sound makes its appearance in one of these readings again. I don't have too much of an intro this time except to say that we are going to be focused on money quite a bit because as we know with the earth element, the earth element does represent money in tarot especially uh, and definitely in Vedic astrology. Though in Vedic astrology there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot more to earth but definitely in tarot we're dealing with the pentacles or the coins and of course um, in regular cards it's the diamonds. So. Yes, yeah, it's all about money and all three are focused on money. So I know some of you like to watch all three of them. I was thinking about that, that there's not too much variety in terms of topic here. But if you were watching all three, you can probably spot different people in your life. Uh, so maybe one of them will apply to you and maybe the other two readings will apply in particular to other people in your life. There's that bell. I can just see it out my window. All right, well then maybe, maybe it won't make an appearance in one of the readings. Who knows? We'll find out. But yeah, how amazing. So I, I think the, the truck comes by every couple of weeks. I'm just learning this myself because um, all winter, you know, I didn't hear it at all. So it's kind of a new thing here in Sydney, Australia. All right, guys. Well, as I say, pick between group one, group two, or group three. I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one, you are in the right place. So let's take a look at your cards. The first card is very exciting. That there says vediclifecoach.co.uk. I made this. It's just a standard print. Uh, there's nothing to it, but I wanted to use proper business cards to write these out because before I was just doing it on scraps of paper and it really is quite good to do them uh, on a nice card. So we've got cards finally. Hang on, I'm just going to make sure I'm recording. Yes, I am. Okay. So you've got moon in the fourth house. So I shuffled, I drew up moon in every single house and then I shuffled and group one got moon in the fourth house. Okay, so let's have that as our lead card. And then we've got tarot, we've got the 10 of cups upright. This is perhaps one of the best cards to receive in any reading for anything at any time. <laughs> this is like just one of the absolute best cards you could possibly get. So well done, <laughs> you've chosen well. The Empress, upright. Another very beautiful card. A lot of feminine energy here on the table. We've got Moon in her own house here. We've got the Empress, we've got this glorious Ten of Cups, which is water, we've got another Cups card. All right, Seven of Cups reversed. It's a lot of water energy here on the table. And for the regular cards, you've got nine of hang on, hearts or cups. And you've got the king of diamonds, which could be seen as being pentacles. Oh, it's not focusing. I wonder why. There we go. Another beautiful card. Guys, this is a gorgeous spread. Like this is great what you've picked, especially for money, because one of the things that it's showing me is that there is a love of money. So your relationship with money is that, yes, yeah, I don't see uh, that, you know, 
that you've got too many problems with the concept of money, right? It doesn't matter what the outer looks like. It doesn't matter how much is in your bank account. It doesn't matter any of that. What this is all showing to me is that I don't think you hate money or think it's really evil or that you begrudge others for having it or I don't get any of that here. I get that you've got a really good, healthy, strong relationship with money. And I definitely get that you like to spend it, <laughs> right? Moon in the fourth house, people who have this placement will typically love to spend, you know, they'll love spending their money, uh, especially on things that they want to enjoy and pleasures. You know, you want to live well, you want to enjoy luxuries, you know, um, and that can also be moon in Taurus as well. I've, I know someone, you know, moon in the fourth house in Taurus there. This person absolutely loves luxurious homewares, you know. So there's, I, I feel like there's a really good relationship with money here. I think the only thing that I'm seeing, let's see. So, I mean, one thing that I can also say is that I think in the life here, money comes and goes. Uh, there's a f real fluidity of money because we've got a lot of water energy here, right? So we've got a lot of cups on the table and there's a little bit of earth here, uh, but this is water as well, right? So there's a lot of water. So I would imagine that money does come in for you and money goes out you know, just as much. If I see a spread that has a lot of earth energy, and especially like a four of pentacles and that kind of thing, or like a knight of pentacles or a lot of heavy earth energy, then I can say that perhaps a person accumulates a lot of wealth, but they might be stingy, right? I don't get that vibe from this spread at all. I think that you've got a really good, strong, lovely, healthy relationship with money. I'd say that the only thing that might be a little bit of a downfall in your relationship with money is the fact that you're not very decisive, right? I would say that is the one thing. I think you've got a huge amount of choice in front of you of things that you can do with your money or ways that you can make more money. But what happens with you? And if this was upright, there'd be a lot of choice. But I feel like you'd know what to choose. I'd feel like, okay, there's a huge amount of choice. You're excited. But I feel like for you, there's a huge amount of choice and you're not sure what to do. You're not sure how to invest your money. You're not sure. And the decisiveness is not there. I feel like you might frequently be in two minds about things. Um, and there's a, a difficulty in making, you know, a real solid choice that I'm going to do this. I'm going to invest all of my money in this way or you know, um, I'm going to really commit myself to this plan in order to bring in more money. It's that kind of thing. So I'd say really that's the only issue that's going on here. Uh, it's that. It's, it's to do with your decisiveness. So what would the solution be? And the solution is really coming through in these cards here. So again, in these cards, so that's one of the ways that I was looking at this. The other thing I can also say, which is quite interesting, is that with Moon in the fourth, there's something to do with mother. Okay, so there's something to do with the beliefs that your mother passed down to you about money, right? So as part of this reading, the homework for this reading would be to, and because it's about money, you know, and all that kind of thing. There is a little bit of homework, I think, in each reading. Let's see how we go. But because um, I'm recording yours first, obviously, but the homework would be to really investigate and explore and think about what were your mother's beliefs around money? How was she with money? And how has that influenced you? And how has that influenced the way you go about, you know, bringing abundance into your life, how you go about spending, what that relationship is, you will find a huge number of clues by really exploring your relationship with your mum and your your mum's relationship with money. So that would be a really good activity for you to do. So that's one of the things that this reading is definitely prompting that might help you 
to figure out some of what's going on here, some of the indecision that's going on. Uh, but I mean, in these cards, and this is kind of the, the row that's really telling me where you are, which is quite good, really, but this is giving me solutions. And these are great cards to get. I was so impressed by your spread. I think it's truly out of the three, this is one of the best um, to get when it comes to money because the homework isn't massive. And, um, you know, definitely just being exploring your relationship with your mum. And here, I would say it's the king of pentacles. So you could also be looking at the beliefs that your dad had around money and what he passed on to you as well. Uh, but I would say to me, this is really representing, this is saying that you're going to be fine. This is saying that money's always going to be there for you. Um, even if things are quite tight right now, even if you're very uncertain, maybe you haven't had a job for ages, um, but say, for example, you're okay, that's abundance, right? Uh, you know, if we are eating every day, if we've got a roof over our head, if we've got, you know, clothes that don't have holes in them, that's actually a very good an abundant life so we've got to be grateful for that um, but the way to progress and to bring more of this in because on the other side right every time you're in a pickle every time you're not in the best way or you can't afford things or whatever you're as Abraham Hicks would say you're shooting off a rocket of desire and you're clocking up your wealth on the other side so you clocked up a huge amount of wealth if you're not experiencing it here on this earth right now know that it's it's there for you and it's wanting to come in very much so so i would say that is representative of behind the veil this is your only real blockage and it's to do with indecision it's to do with the inability to just really go for it to say i'm doing this and really commit to it uh, and to really go for it so there's something around that this card here is really saying that the solution is very much also to become more educated around this topic, right? Financial education is so, so important. And the person that popped into my mind in regards to this card was definitely someone like Robert Kiyosaki. He was the author of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is a really easy read, really easy way to get into getting your head into gear for investing and thinking long term and sowing the seeds and he's a real classic for helping entrepreneurs get off the ground for helping small businesses get started all that kind of thing he's really really good and he's got lots and lots of educational materials so i would say that could be a starting point to you know looking at how to grow things for you um, but as you investigate him, you might come across lots of other people. I know, oh, there's another person that I could point you to. If you're an online entrepreneur, there's Ali Abdal. I'll spell it out for you. A-L-I and then A-B-D-A-L. And he's got a fantastic video about how to make money on the internet. So I recommend him. Um, he shares with people how much money he makes from his YouTube channel and things like that and all his various online activities. So I would recommend those for financial education if that was something that appealed to you. But this is a terrific spread to get, guys, for money. I would be super happy if I picked this one. And especially if I was in a situation where I was worried about money, um, I'd be really happy to pick this one because this one is definitely showing me that there is a huge amount clocked up on the other side it's just about me relaxing, being more decisive and educating myself of all the different ways that I can bring it in. So I hope this has been a good reading for you, group number one. Do let me know how it goes in the comments. I absolutely love reading what you have to say. It really helps me to you know, keep making these. Uh, I really enjoy reading your thoughts so thank you so much for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you next time hi there group number two if you chose group two you are in the right place let's take a look at your cards now the first card that we have this is a completely new type of card i designed these um, 
that's his vediclifecoach.co.uk and I just draw on there all the different moons that are possible so the 12 moons I shuffle them and you got moon in the third house fantastic so that is a terrific start already and then your tarot cards are six of wands in reverse you've got the hierophant upright you have got hold on oh nothing wants to align there we go the six of cups upside down okay so let's take a look at these ah we have two more cards yet i'm rushing today i'm going really fast <laughs> How could I forget these two? They're gold and they're shiny. These are the best cards. Seven of clubs, which is the same as seven of wands. And you've got the king of wands as well, the king of clubs. Aren't they beautiful? I love anything that shines. Look at that. <laughs> I'm a simple lady. If it shines, I like it. Okay. What have we got going on here? Apologies about that, my Mac is being very noisy. We'll just carry on, shall we? All right, what do we have going on here? This is a very interesting spread. And I like you people a lot. I think you're fascinating. I like all three groups, people, but it's, you know, I, I really relate to this one. This is one of the things I relate to. I relate to the first group as well, but one of the things I relate to here about Moon in the third house is that you really want to make the money yourself, right? You really want to be hands-on. You want that through your effort, you succeed, okay? I could imagine that if you won the lottery, for example, and the other thing is all of these cards are telling me this, not just that one, but Moon in the Third is definitely indicating the thing about effort, that you want to put the effort in, you want to succeed, Right? If you were to win the lottery, I think that would make you happy for a little while, but I think you'd get bored and I think you would be getting engaged in some kind of business activity or some kind of business venture. Uh, I don't see that, that that would be the thing for you. I feel like, I mean, you'd love it. I'm sure, I'm sure you would love to win the lottery, but after a while you'd be like, okay, well, I want to be doing something in the world. I want to be doing, I want to be engaged. I want to be, you know, and I want my success to be acknowledged, right? Massive thing going on in this spread. You want the success, you really do. You want your hard work to be acknowledged. And so far, yes, maybe at times it has been, but perhaps not enough. Perhaps you might be going, you know what? I work so hard. And you know, what is it that I'm not doing? I'm doing everything I possibly can. And yet, there goes that ice cream truck. <laughs> Just a little bit this time, I think he's going home. Cause he didn't ring it too much. How do I weave that in? Let's see, he's going home, he's giving up. Well, is he being acknowledged? I mean, he drove around quite a bit today, but I don't know if anyone bought any ice cream. But there is this feeling of, um, you know, that you've been working really, really hard. There's no doubt about it, but you love to work hard. I also do get that sense that you, you enjoy it. I think you, and I think you want to work hard and I think you want, it's that feeling of your hands in the clay. It's that feeling of, I, and that's a really good example, hands in the clay. It's like, I make this product and people love buying it. Even if it's intellectual property, even if it's content, even if it's something abstract. I do get the sense that you love making things or you love working or you love putting effort in. You love being hands-on and you want that to be recognized, right? Deep down, you do want that, right? You might not admit it to people uh, and money is a very, very sensitive topic. There are often things that we feel about money but that we would never say out loud or that we would never tell anybody else or whatever and it's perfectly fine to want to work hard and be cashing in but you know have have the money flowing in that's a wonderful thing and of course that's very much here for you 
but let's see, we've still got a couple more things to get through. So what's going on here with the Hierophant? The Hierophant is telling me, so this is telling me, both of these are telling me that you would love to be, you know, in charge of your life, in, in charge of the money situation a bit more, and that as you put effort, boom, the money comes in. That's the kind of thing that you want, right? So, and that's great. That's a good thing to want. Now the Hierophant is telling me that there's something to do with your family and your beliefs uh, that is actually a bit of a blockage. And um, it's showing me that you're stuck to tradition somehow or that your parents did it this way and therefore um, you know you have to do it that way. Or it could be maybe you don't want to out earn your parents, right? That could be what this is talking about, the Hierophant card. Hierophant card is very much about tradition. It's very much about family. It also represents Taurus. So, but I'm sensing that there is a bit of a blockage here in this group. And I think it could be connected in with, it's, it's kind of some old outdated way, right? There's some old outdated way or there's some notion that you've inherited or there's some idea that it has to be done this way or um, you know there's a style it could be a style thing as well that there's a certain style you know that well how you know how my dad would approach it he would always write a letter it was maybe you just need to be a bit quicker about things and hop on the email and do you know what I mean it's something like that um, where your parents always did things a certain way and you think you have to do it that way but it's like, no, actually, you could do with dropping the old ways, right? Uh, this card here, Six of Cups upside down, is indicating when it's upright, this is a wonderful card to get. It's a nostalgic card. It's a card that, you know, you're reflecting on good times. It's also a real twin flame type card as well. Great to get in a love reading. But when it's upside down and it's in a reading like this, it's indicating that you are ready now to leave the past behind okay you're ready you're ready to get the recognition that you deserve okay and this is around deservability it's time that you charge properly for your services it's time that you um you take on the next level and it's going to require some shedding it's definitely going to require some shedding the other thing that i can tell about this spread is that when it comes to money i think your relationship with money is actually quite balanced uh, I'm not, did I say that earlier? I can't remember if I did. If I'm doubling up, I apologize. But you, you're definitely quite balanced with your relationship with money. But in order to move forward, and in order to move forward from this blockage that we've got in here, you're going to need some fire energy. And that's what these cards have come in to say. They've come in to say, it's time to burn up the old, especially this card here. This is really asking to burn up what you don't need. The other thing is that this card is also saying to me the seven of wands or um, clubs, is it saying that you're stubborn in some area? And that's also fitting in with this. There's something that you're really stubborn about as well. Maybe you inherited that stubbornness. Um, there's something in your life where you're really stubborn that you know that if you could relax that, you'd be fine. Right? And it could be to do with, let's say you're a spiritual person and your parents believe that it's very sinful to charge for spiritual services or things like that and they're very stubborn about it and then you've inherited that and you feel uncomfortable charging for the amount of work that you do because you're working so hard. Um, but you're, there's a stubbornness maybe, but it could also be something completely different as well. But what, what I'm gauging is there's a stubbornness um, that could do with being burnt up. This is fire energy. And this fire energy is very much here for you to burn up the old because you are ready. You are totally ready to leave the past behind. Okay. And it's, this is a really great spread um, to get because it's showing, it's showing the next level up as well. So we've got six, we've got five, we've got a six here. Okay, and then look at that, you've manifested a seven. You've manifested the next level up. And in order to get there, you're going to have to burn up something of the old. The other thing that I wanted to say that you have to burn up is 
you got to burn up any feelings of lack, any feelings that you don't deserve, that you're not worthy, uh, and, and things around you that you can't out earn your parents or you can't go beyond what they did. You absolutely can, okay? You can go beyond. Uh, you can go beyond and you can get, you can find that groove where you're putting in effort and you're getting that money and you're putting in effort, you're getting money. Like, you'll be able to find that thing that you do and very often it's something that you're so passionate about that you do for free anyway. You know, it's, it's that. Then you don't feel like you're working. Then all that extra work that you do, it doesn't, you don't even notice it. Right, so you do you you will achieve that through doing work that you are so passionate about and that you really love, and that is all here for you. Okay, uh, King of Wands. What have we got here? Clubs, creativity. Look at that. This is going to be the way that you get to that next level up. It's going to, and it is going to be using your masculine side. This is a bit more of a masculine spread than group one. Group one was very feminine energy. This one, you're going to have to use masculine energy. You're going to have to do a lot. You, and not a lot. I, I'm not saying that you have to work hard and burn out. Or, no, no, no. This is like, but you are going to have to do. Okay, this is a real doing sort of a spread. Also, we've got third house here. There's a real thing about doing an effort, and that's good, you know? It, it, and it doesn't have to be. Everybody's got a slightly different chart and a slightly different setup. And for some people, it's better that they relax and allow the money to come in. I think that's more group number one. But group number two, you guys do need to do and put plans into place, do things, get stuff done. Uh, and get that momentum going. And when you get the machine of your life going, you'll be able to achieve a lot and bring in a lot. You know, there's that phrase, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. And I do think a part of this spread is all around getting the machine of your life going in such a way that you're spitting it out and bringing it in, <laughs> right? So group number two, I do hope uh, that this has been a good productive reading for you, a good financial reading. Uh, let me know how you get on with this in the comments below. I would love to hear how you get on, but um, thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there group three. If you chose group three then you are in the right place. I'm going to show you your cards. First card is this which is it's got my vediclifecoach.co.uk there. It's basically just business cards, which um, I drew all the different moons on 12 cards and I shuffled that and you guys got moon in the first house. Okay, so that's how we're starting the reading. You got the page of cups upright. It's a beautiful card. They're all beautiful in this it's called Rider Wise. I got that right? I can't see it. <laughs> okay, Page of Pentacles. Reversed. And you have got, oh hello, the star card upright. That is one of the best cards to get in a reading. I love this card. Having good spreads this time, all three. Really, really, really good. Which is fantastic because we've got Saturn in Capricorn and this even though it is a bit of a tough time I know it's hard to earn any money right now but when we're working with Saturn uh, the potential is to earn quite big and for you the potential is very high so we're going to talk about that uh, so we've got the seven of spades or swords in tarot and we've got the ace of diamonds or pentacles in tarot how beautiful great spread guys so one of the things this is telling me is that your relationship with money is very much on your mind right now in the first house it's very important to you though you may not show it it's a very important thing in your life you're probably thinking about it quite a lot and that's a good thing 
because there is definitely abundance here for you. It's just about working out how to bring that in. The other thing that this spread, when I take these away, this is showing me that you've got quite a good balanced relationship with money. You've got fire, water, earth, air. You've got a good balanced relationship with money. You're not too obsessive about money, even though it is on your mind a lot and it's important to you right now. Um, you're balanced about it. You're not, you're not, you know, in a bad way or in too much lack mentality or any of that. No, I think you're doing really quite well mentally in your relationship with money. I think you've, you've got a good relationship. What I would say is that in order for you to bring in this massive abundance, right? Because this is big, big, big abundance. We're talking about an ace card and we're talking about this beautiful major arcana here, which is Aquarius, which is the 11th house of hopes, dreams, and wishes. This is the big money, okay? This is like uh, the big stuff. So, but you're not gonna, I tell you, this isn't coming overnight, okay? And one of the things about this spread is that this spread is indicating the longest term, right? This is gonna take a long time to come in. This is Saturnian. This is a tiny little bit of work each day. This is the kind of thing where maybe you've written several books and you know, you're know you a bestseller and you, your fifth book is bringing in the big money. It's that kind of thing, right? Sort of. Wow, that's quite a lovely bird that's chirping. Oh, we haven't had, I don't know if you could hear that. I hope that comes on the recording. There's a really, as I was talking about that, there's a very loud bird chirping. So that's a very good omen, I do believe, because it was a very sweet sound as well. Um, this is showing me this section here. I'm going to include this in it. Well, this is kind of the solution. So we'll include this in a moment. What this is showing me is that at the moment, you are being prepared you're being prepared to shoulder a lot more responsibility when it comes to money. Okay, so I think in the past, maybe you haven't devoted much time to thinking about money or it's not been an interest to you or, um, you know, and maybe your relationship with it is that you've been a bit of a dreamer, right? That's this card here. And this is telling me that there might have been a lack of commitment in the past. And you're going to need commitment if you, let's say it's a business, so, or it could be that you have to write several books to get here, or it could be um, that you, uh, when you're building your business, you've got to put in quite a bit of effort. That it's a, it's a kind of, and I'm, I'm kind of getting a sense of maybe like four to five years worth of effort before you really start to see the goods, if you know what I mean, which I know that might sound disheartening. I know they say for startup businesses, it generally takes two to three years. That in the first two to three years, businesses either succeed or fail. So that's a classic time frame. Um, but I'm seeing that it, it could be more than that. And what it is that you're trying to manifest or do or achieve, it is going to take long-term commitment. It is going to take, um, and when I mean long-term commitment, I mean a little bit of work each day, like an hour or two each day. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about the fact that he had in him, when it came to writing a book, he had within him about four hours of quality work within him each day. And I also wrote a book and published it on Amazon, and I found the same. I found that I could do maximum four to five hours, mm, maximum four, no, uh, maximum three to four hours of, of quality concentration each day. Uh, a friend of mine who is a surgeon, we spoke about this and he said, and I was like, but don't you do surgery for like six hours and stuff like that? And he said, yeah. And he said, but really I've got maximum four hours of quality work in me per day. So from lots of different professions, people are saying that they've only got about you know, four hours of work in them per day. So when we look at this card being in reverse, saying that you've got a lack of commitment, it's not so much 
that you're not working hard. I'm sure you're very hard working. I'm sure you put in the eight hours a day, you know, or you have done in your job like anyone else. Or, you know, I'm sure you've worked very hard in your life, of course. But like when it comes to you doing your thing, can you put that eight hours in a day? And, and then like, does it have to be eight hours a day? That's the other thing. When it's your own thing, it might not be, you know. Um, and I, I feel like this is you establishing your own thing, whether that be establishing your own business or writing your books or doing your own thing. And at the moment, you're kind of not thinking that it can really bring in the big bucks, <laughs> right? You're not thinking that yet. But that's where this comes in. And this is telling me that it can. And, and, and that, but that, in order to get here, right, to this, you're gonna have to start thinking a lot sharper, focusing a lot more, right? So we're talking about doing a bit less work each day, but doing it very consistently and committing to it. And for the long term, that's what this reading really feels to me. So you're committing, you're doing a little bit each day, you're working sharper, you're working smarter, not harder. Right, so this is swords energy. Okay, so this is air, this is Saturn. It's this card, the other thing that this card is very much about is about tactics and strategy. It's about being strategic. So hence it is about putting in that little bit of work each day to get to this place. Maybe it is around financial education. Maybe it is around learning the stock market or learning long-term investing or learning certain things it'll definitely be as well the work that you'll have to do here will be around beliefs and observability uh, it will also be about you know shouldering more responsibility so really maturing into um, you know taking on that responsibility maybe there's always been someone older that's around you or um, parents have always sorted things out or there's always been someone that you can turn to, but it's like, no, in the future, it's just going to be you, right? It's not going to be anybody else. You're going to be the top person. You're going to be the one in charge. You're going to have to shoulder the complex and difficult responsibility that finances often bring. And it's not often fun, right? Um, it doesn't have to be boring, okay? But, you know, sometimes, and I'm getting a little bit of a feel of that kind of Jupiter Mercury line maybe with some of the people here in that um, you're running a lot of either Virgo uh, Pisces or Gem Sag there's a little bit of this you know maybe you're great at being that big visionary but are you great at filling in the tax forms <laughs> Do you know what I mean and, and um, being sharp and strategic and and doing some of the boring stuff that's, that's gonna bring you to this place here. So that's really what I'm feeling with this group. It's a terrific spread, group number three. Uh, terrific potential to, to bring in a lot, but this does feel a bit in the distance, does feel a little bit far away. It's gonna take time to get there. I'm not sure, did I say that it would take about four to five years? Sometimes I forget what I've said, that's terrible. <laughs> I've only been talking for 10 minutes. Oh dear. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just a great spread, guys. And it will take time to bring this in. This is a long-term thing. This is a long-haul reading. If you're after something that's a bit more immediate guidance, then you can have a look at group number one or two. But um, yeah, and this is great. The, all you need to do is just be sharp, be strategic, um, be very educated, be very up on what it is you need to do financially to get there. You might, as I say, you might need to learn about shares and um, or company structures or, or complex things, you know, that aren't the most exciting but will require your attention because you're going to be that person with the responsibility. All right, well, I do hope there's been a good reading group number three. Uh, all readings, you know, have a terrific financial outlook despite the fact that things aren't so good right now. Uh, I know it's tough for a lot of people out there, but I do think with Saturn in Capricorn, it's going to be a little bit tough. 
um, for a little while yet, but we are going to be opening to to newer realms uh, within the coming years. So, Group Three, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Please let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love to hear from you. I love reading what you have to say. It really helps me to put these together and construct these. So thank you so much to everybody who likes, who comments, and all those who subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time.